every other year, our OSU Vegetable Research Station here in Bixby has an open house, field day, just a, an opportunity for folks to come by and see some of the research that's being conducted here at the station. Now, the research is primarily beneficial to the commercial grower, but the homeowners can also benefit. Well, here to start the tour with us is OSU professor Dr. Brian Kahn. Hello, Steve. Dr. Kahn, welcome to the program. Thank you. And uh, Brian, what type of research do we have going on in, in this area? Well, this is a yellow crookneck summer squash variety trial. Okay. And when, when we do a, a variety trial of pretty much anything, what, what are we looking for? Why, why do we do these variety trials? Well, as you know, there are just any number of different varieties available among the different kinds of vegetables, and it's not possible for our growers or our gardeners to try every single one. And of course, we can't do that here at the station either, but we try to take a representative sampling of some of the most important commercial varieties out there and just try to see which ones might be best adapted to our conditions here in Oklahoma. Okay. Um, it seems like one thing that y you always compare some of the newer varieties to are uh, a, a variety that's uh, proven successful in the past, correct? Right. We always like to have at least one commercial standard in the trial so that we have something to compare to, a standard of comparison. Okay. And what would that be for this year? For well, this, in this, this trial? in this particular trial, it's a yellow crookneck squash called Dixie. Now, Dixie is an older hybrid squash, and it's been on the market for several years but it has a lot of traits that the commercial market likes. It's got a nice crook neck, bright green stem, and uh, has been a pretty good, uh, pretty good yielder over the years, year in and year out. It's been dependable. Okay. Well, w when, when you think about uh, all, all these different uh, varieties of yellow crook neck squash, it, it seems like if, you, if you've seen one, you've seen them all. Uh, <laughs> so maybe you could tell us some of the, uh, the differences uh, in, the, in these different varieties. Right, and that's one of the things that I really enjoy about doing variety trial work, Steve, is just trying to learn a little bit about the diversity that we have in the different kinds of vegetables. Well, a yellow crookneck has some basic characteristics. It's yellow, it's got some kind of a degree of crook in the neck, but they're not all the same. If you look at this one here, this is what we call a full crookneck, and you see it's got a big mm -hmm. loop, almost like a swan's neck there. Then another type would be like what you see up here, or this one, and these are what we call semi-crook necks. It doesn't have quite the curve to it. It doesn't have quite the curve, and the advantage of that is that when you're picking this, it's a little bit less likely to break off, and it's also a little bit more sturdy in the marketing chain. But as with most vegetables, you really have to know your market outlet, because some markets are going to demand a full crook and they wouldn't accept something that was this straight. Interesting. The stems are different colors. Yes, they are. Um, this squash here, this particular variety, has what's called the precocious yellow gene. And what that gene does is it makes the squash yellow from the stem all the way to the blossom end from the time that it's just a tiny little squash with the female flower still attached, as opposed to a standard squash like this that you see has the green stem and then the yellow body of it. So the green is, is I think, what I would think of as the yellow squash. This, this seems more traditional than, than the yellow stem. It's definitely traditional, and there's some markets that would only accept a squash with the green stem, which is one reason why something like Dixie is a commercial standard. But the advantage of growing something with the yellow stem is that sometimes squash get virus diseases and this yellow gene masks some of the early symptoms of the virus disease in the squash so that it still looks nice and green and it's still marketable because early on the virus isn't going to affect the eating quality of the squash but if there are a little bit of green streaks in it then it wouldn't be saleable anymore so this gives the grower a little bit more of an opportunity to sell the plant uh, in case the virus does happen to strike. Okay, I, I'm just curious, does the uh, the yellow stem taste like the rest of the squash? <laughs> I don't think you'd want to eat the yellow stem. It's going to taste pretty much like a woody old squash stem would. Okay. Not very good. No difference there. No difference there. Okay, so uh, some of the uh, varieties here are more resistant to uh, different diseases and viruses? Yes, they are, and that's always one of the things that we look at in any variety trial is we try to evaluate for differences in, in disease resistance, and a lot of times uh, J Dr. John Damacone, who's our extension plant pathologist, helps us with that. 
we look over here, we've got an example of a squash plant that has some type of virus disease. Okay. Now, without having the benefit of the plant pathologist, we're not going to know exactly what virus it is. It could be zucchini yellow mosaic, or it could be cucumber mosaic, or watermelon mosaic. It's some kind of a mosaic virus, and they call it mosaic because you get this kind of a mottling yellow and green pattern on the leaves. Now eventually you're going to get several plants in the field that have this and that's going to be one of the things that helps determine when we finish the trial just as it would with a commercial planting if they get too much virus in there then they're just going to stop picking it's not worth it anymore. Okay. Uh, so, so what are some of the uh, varieties that uh, do exhibit? some of the uh, increased resistance? Well, usually if a variety has some resistance, the seed company likes to tout that as a selling point for obvious reasons. Um, one of the ones is over here, it's called Prelude 2. Okay. And this one has some virus resistance. This is one of the ones that you can see would be considered a full crook. Oh yeah, it's, definitely. It's a pretty nice squash. It's nice and smooth, got a nice yellow color and a full crook to it. And then there's another one over here, which is called Destiny 3. It's a little bit more variable, and that's one of the things that we're looking at when we test it, because this one's more like a semi-crook, and this one's a full crook, and it's also got a little bit of wartiness to it, and we really don't like to see that. That's fine in a home garden, but commercially they don't like to see a lot of warts on the squash. They want a nice smooth surface. Here's one that's really very warty. Okay. And Bef we before, would... before the homeowner, the, the warts don't really affect the taste. Oh no, no. And in fact, the, uh, the standard crookneck squash that some of your older viewers grew up with were almost undoubtedly warted and that's just the way that they were. There's nothing at all wrong with it. It's just that in the modern commercial marketing chains, they like to see more of a smooth squash. No, it's not a disease or anything. It's just genetically the way the plant is. Okay, well, you can definitely see that variation in the, 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 the crookedness of, of the squash. Yep. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Conner. Thank you, Steve. Last year, one of our theme gardens at our studio gardens in Stillwater was a pepper garden. We had several different varieties of peppers, but here at the Bixby Research Station this year, Dr. Khan, you guys have got 35 different peppers Thir on display? 35 different peppers, yes sir. Okay, and this is not really a variety trial. What, what would you describe this, this display as? This is basically just a demonstration for the public to give people a chance to see a number of different peppers in one place at one time. Okay, all right, and the one we're looking at here is a very colorful one. This is one called Varangata, which is grown basically as an ornamental, and as you can see, it's got this really pretty variegated foliage, got purple flowers, little purple fruits here on it, and uh, it's just grown as an ornamental pepper. It's very pretty. Very, very attractive. We guys certainly do have, have a lot of peppers. I really like this, this dark purple foliage pepper we've got across here. It Which almost one is looks, this? It almost looks like a basil, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's called Black Cuban, and again, you see these small, very dark purple fruits on it, and uh, this actually is edible as a little, very hot pepper, but again, you would grow it primarily as an ornamental to put some color contrast in your garden. Those are almost like, uh, they almost look like black olives. Yeah, very yeah, shiny. they do, but they don't taste like an olive. Okay. Well, uh, some of the uh, banana peppers or the uh, Hungarian wax peppers are, are very popular, and you've got one here that's got some very large fruit on it. Which one do we have here, Dr. Khan? This is one called Hot Spot. And it is a, a hot wax pepper, fairly new. And like you said, it's got that long, yellow, waxy-looking pod. This would have some heat to it. Okay, but you do have a, a cool version of this? There's a cool version called Sweet Spot that looks very similar, but is sweet. Doesn't sweet. have the heat. Doesn't have the heat. Okay. Well, you guys have planted a lot of jalapenos in the uh, display this year, correct? Right. Uh, over here on this side, we've got a total of actually 13 jalapenos and we've put them all side by side so people can easily compare them. Okay. They are mostly hybrids, a few open pollinated, and some of them, like this one called Senorita, are actually sweet. Okay. They have the jalapeno flavor but not much heat. All right, so not your traditional jalapeno. No. Well, speaking of jalapenos that are not very traditional, you've got one over here that's uh, somewhat unique. 
This is one from New Mexico, which is called New Mex Pinata. And you can see here that it's got different colors on the plant. And it's got some green fruit and some yellow. And we've even got one there that's starting to turn orange. And eventually they'll go all the way red. Now this is a standard jalapeno with some heat to it, but it makes for a very colorful salsa or salad if you were to chop it up and, uh, and use it that way. But you could also use it as a, an ornamental pepper, one of those that uh, uh, sort of change from, from different color sure. to yeah, different it would color look, throughout the season. It would look very different in your garden with the, with the color change. Okay. And most jalapenos don't do that, right? Most of them don't. They're just standard greens. Okay. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Dr. Khan. Thanks for showing us these peppers.